If burgers were on a commercial airline flight, beef burgers would be way up in first class. Like far enough up that if it were on an international flight, they'd be able to like lay their seat down into a bed and actually fall asleep. And turkey burgers, let's be honest, most are a middle seat in the back row that is somehow both right next to the bathroom and directly over the engines. Ugh, I hate that. Wait, why are the burgers on a plane? Let's start things off with the meat of the matter. You can buy 99% lean turkey at the store, but thankfully you can also buy 93% lean. There are times when you can even get fattier than 93, but it's not common. For burgers, you gotta go for at least 93% or fattier for a couple of reasons. First is that fat in any burger melts during cooking and adds the perception of juiciness. And the second is that fat carries a lot of flavor. And since turkey is a particularly mild tasting meat, we'll take all the flavor we can get. If we were making beef burgers, we'd be, well, we'd be done. We'd take our patties and sear them in a skillet until browned on the exterior. They'd be super juicy on the inside and packed with tons of beefy flavor. We'd build the burger on a nice bun and dig in. But we're talking turkey. And if we want a turkey burger that will change your mind about turkey burgers, we can't stop there. Because turkey needs some help. A burger should be juicy, so we know that's our goal. But what actually determines whether meat turns out juicy or not? According to food scientists, juiciness is determined by the moisture content, pH, water holding capacity, and firmness of the meat, and the residual fluid, both moisture and fat, remaining in the final product, which is dependent upon the conditions of temperature and time imposed on the cut during cookery. Okay, that is a mouthful, but there are some big clues in there about how to impact juiciness. First, we're gonna look at pH. There is a powerful technique often used in Chinese stir fries where you apply baking soda to raw meat in order to raise its pH. It works by altering the charge on the muscle filaments so that they repel each other and remain a tiny tender distance apart during cooking. The result is muscle fibers don't contract as much and therefore don't squeeze out moisture. So that's gonna help us with the tenderness and water holding capacity. But it doesn't end there. Higher pH means better browning as Maillard reactions favor an alkaline environment. You can see that in this experiment using ground beef, where the baking soda treated meat develops rich browning. Okay, so we've got our first helper. Baking soda is in the shopping cart. On the subject of water holding capacity, there's an ingredient that is known for holding onto and trapping many times its weight in water, and that's gelatin. Think about a jello mold, where gelatin traps loads of sugary water, creating a solid. Gelatin is largely what's responsible for the juiciness we perceive in braised meat, as it absorbs liquid and holds it in place. For turkey burgers, we aren't working with a tough cut that is naturally rich in collagen, the protein that transforms into gelatin over a long, slow cook time. But that's okay. We can simply add unflavored powdered gelatin to the mix. You made the team, gelatin. Another ingredient that absorbs and holds onto moisture is starch. In meatballs and meatloaf, starch is often added in the form of bread or breadcrumbs. We aren't trying to make a meatloaf here, so we want to be careful with how much we add. We found that just three tablespoons of panko not only helped with juiciness, but the breadcrumbs also helped break up the tight texture of store-bought ground turkey. Panko, you're hired. Okay, so far these measures are largely aimed at moisture, or what I'll call water-based juices. But if you remember from our technical definition, fat is also part of the juiciness equation. We have 93% lean, which is a great starting point, but we can make a market improvement by adding just a small amount of additional fat. In our side-by-side -side test, one tablespoon of melted butter distributed over four patties made a noticeable improvement. Fat lubricates our tongue and provides the perception of juiciness. Butter is in. Now that we have an all-star roster of helpful ingredients, let's do a quick side-by-side -side of a burger made of just ground turkey and one using our blend. Both of these were cooked to 160 degrees and rested until they hit 165. When we cut them open, we can see the difference in juiciness, especially when I give each a little press. Wow. Now that we've nailed the texture, we can focus a bit on flavor. Turkey is mild. We know this. We aren't trying to make a feta roasted red pepper turkey burger. Well, that does sound pretty nice. And just completely cover up the flavor. We want something that tastes like a savory, rich, best version of turkey. One key thing to focus on here is umami the mouth-filling, savory taste we get from everything from mushrooms and tomatoes to soy sauce and Parmesan cheese. Getting some umami-rich ingredients into these burgers will make them mouth-watering and satisfying. After a slew of tests with a wide range of ingredients, Cook's Illustrated senior editor Annie Petito settled on a little soy sauce and a little Parmesan, both of which contain high amounts of glutamic acid, the amino acid responsible for the savory taste we call umami. Parmesan cheese clocks in at almost 1,700 milligrams of glutamic acid per 100 grams. And soy sauce is not far behind at 1,100 milligrams. Both also bring complexity and some welcome salt. Okay, let's put this whole thing together. For that, let's go to the kitchen. I'm gonna start by combining water and baking soda in a small bowl. 
After breaking the meat up into rough half inch pieces, I drizzle on the baking soda mixture. Next, we have our soy sauce and melted butter. Then we evenly sprinkle panko, parmesan, gelatin, and a little pepper and salt over the turkey mixture and mix gently to combine. I'm gonna make some quarter pounders, so I divide the meat into four ounce portions and flatten them to about a half inch thick. Beautiful, now it's time to cook. I'm gonna place the burgers in a cool oiled nonstick skillet. Huh? Okay, stick with me here. For burgers where you want medium rare, the move is to sear in a hot pan so that the exterior develops a rich brown crust while the interior remains cooler. But we are going for fully cooked here. We want to evenly and gently heat the interior while the exterior browns. Remember from our juiciness definition that time and temperature have a big impact on juiciness. We turn the heat to medium, and when the patties start to sizzle, we cover the skillet, which traps steam and helps the burgers cook through evenly. We'll cook until the patties are well browned on the bottom, which takes about two and a half minutes. Then we flip and repeat on side two. Now, if you're adding cheese, which I am absolutely doing, pop it on like this with a minute left on the cooking time. Ooh, I'm getting hungry. Let's build this thing. First, we've got our perfect patty. I'm gonna do ketchup, tomato, lettuce, and of course, a little mayo, because, well, mayo is the greatest. Now we just squish together and take a bite. Yum. Wow. You know, this isn't just a good turkey burger. It's a darn good burger. If you've been disappointed by turkey burgers in the past, it's time to come back to the table because this is absolutely how to eat turkey burgers. Thank you all so much for watching and a huge thanks to Annie Petito for her fabulous recipe. Now, when you make this recipe, and I know you're gonna make this recipe, I wanna know how you're going to top it. I did ketchup, tomato, lettuce, mayonnaise, and of course I had to have cheese on there. So let me know in the comments what you would do. Make sure when you're down there, you click like, subscribe, and that little bell icon, and I will see you next time.